guys. Hello. Welcome in. <laughs> Welcome to our home. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Welcome to our shop. Yeah, this isn't even away from home. This is just our home. Yeah, this is just home. We sleep here. <laughs> After a decade. I have slept here before. <laughs> Tell Isaac about that the other day. Um, all right. Well, we are going to be continuing the saga of the saddlebags, as I am calling this. I don't know what Justin called it on the YouTube things, but hopefully that's what he did. Saddlebag saga. Saddlebag saga. Um, so last week, if you didn't join us last week, or if you're curious, we finished these 10 by 10 round bottom single billet back of the saddlebags. <laughs> I even added a thing. Very good. Yeah. So if you this this happened last week, really they're pretty darn simple. They are. There's not very many parts to them. There's there's not. It's just a couple pieces. You sew them together. You I think accordion the gusset is probably the most technical thing you did. Oh yeah, that's, and that's yeah. Really Besides technical. breaking three needles. Yes. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. So in any case, so we did this one. This one goes on the back of the back mm -hmm. back of the saddle. It's right. for Things that you don't necessarily always have to get into while you're riding. Yes. For your little carry-alongs. Yeah, for your, when you stop. Your lunch and your bullets. <laughs> your lunch and your... <laughs> Got to carry your bullets. Yeah, and then you can finish. Bullets. Maybe put fire in here so then you can cook your lunch after you sure. shoot it. I don't know. All right. <laughs> so that's, that's what that's for. And then this week we are going to be starting on these horn saddlebags. Yeah. Pommel bags. Pommel bags. Am I right? Is that the horn? Yes. Okay, cool. That is the horn. Thanks. Just wanted that to make is sure. That's the horn. <laughs> that goes through that little hole. Yeah. So they attach to the horn on your saddle. And yes. these are for in riding necessities. Yes. 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 Like you a cell get phone. To them easier. Yes. Exactly. Or some um, some granola bars. <laughs> yeah, everybody carry a bag full of those. Absolutely. Some trip some trail mix on oh, the trail. Yes, yes. That's Don't even carry it in a sack. Just pour it out. Yeah, just bag. pour it in there. It'll be seasoned <laughs> with the meat's foot oil and gum trag. <laughs> Both things that I'm sure are good for your insides. Yeah. yeah. Smooth it right out. Get all that keep, stuff flowing. Keep you regular. Maybe some toilet paper for, <laughs> for when later, it... <laughs> for later. All right. So what's what do you want to call these? Those are pommel bags. Okay. So so no nothing more specific. Uh. I don't know. We could be more. Is this like a? It's like an eight by eight pommel bag. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's good. Round bottom, single billet. <laughs> All right. Well, those are floral stamped, but these we're going to stamp to match those ten by ten bags. Yeah, we're going to continue the saga of the bug eyes. This will be the the bug eye bags. Yeah, bug Because legitimately, and also if you haven't gotten this tool yet, you should. Tell me, yeah. let's let's do the overhead, and I think we have it in two different sizes. We have a small and a large, don't we? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure, but it's an S722 yeah. is what this one is. I, I love it so much. It almost looks like a wood panel, like somebody's, um, especially with the Herman Oak. And then you have this awesome line down the middle of each one. Yeah. And they just, they just look like wood paneling that's been carved, and I love it so much. On the natural Herman Oak, which is a little antique, yeah. it's a good, The only thing, nice. be aware, don't use it on light weather leather because if you stamp it hard enough to really make its its delightful impression you will cut all the way through your yeah piece of leather. it's a deep one gotta have plenty of leather all right okay look and didn't even made himself notes to go by today yes because we're going to make a pattern pack out of these we all are. of these so he's going to try to follow the instructions that he's going to tell the guys i'm going to try <laughs> So, and I've already done step number one. Okay. Which is, I've cut out all the parts to this bag. Basically all the parts. That's right. I, I haven't cut the lace yet. Okay. But I've cut it, and I've also put packing tape on the back of it, because I'm going to stamp this. It's going to stamp it. And another thing the packing tape does is when you put your finish on, it keeps the backside, the underside clean. Because you're not lining these. I still right. didn't get it close enough. Right. Hold, please. Zoom. Perfect. Look at that. Yeah. But anyway, the parts are, these are, this is the bag body right here. This is the bag front. Okay. And also another thing I'm going to show you guys that you, hopefully, there's a big old paw print here. I see that. But I'm going to get rid of that, but I'm going to get rid of it at the very end. Yeah. And there's also, this this part of the leather is a little bit blemished. Yeah. But 
if you guys will be aware, you can use that type of leather in uh, parts of, of your project that are not going to be In the hidden noticed. places. Yes. This is going to be inside the bag. Yeah, it's going to be inside the bag at the bottom. No one, you won't ever see it. If exactly. If you do, you got your head in the bag a little bit too far. Yeah. You're eating too much granola. Eating too much <laughs> granola. Yeah. I see you also got wayward with a pencil right there. Oh, yeah, but that'll, that'll <laughs> I will erase that. Okay. All right, let's get so to stamping. So I've got the bag body, the mm -hmm. bag front. These are the bag flaps or lid. Then I've got to- What leather are we working with? Is this full billet. weight? This is, this is about 10 ounce Herman Oak. Okay. So we've got from from the little hook here goes all the way up down to the bottom we're 17 just over 17 inches to down here for that probably 17 would be just about right on our width we're eight and a quarter and then just this is the front of the bag we are at seven so we're seven inch let's see you're seven by eight pretty much Whatever you're... Do you make it a little bit wider? No, it should be the same width as the back, right? Yeah. All right. And then the lid is four and three quarters by eight and a half. So there you go. Billet to match. Okay. Yeah, billets. And these are the buckle chapes. Buckle chapes. Chapes. That's a weird word. Who it came is, up with that word? It's a really cool word, I think. Jake. And then just don't forget to mirror your sides. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. Oh, and then I guess this one. So this one has a little, because this is your, this is your shape. <laughs> yeah, this is the buckle shape. And then this is your the billet. billet. Yep. Yes. yes. So. And see, and they lace together. Mm -hmm. But they're also adjustable for a larger size horn. That's right. Okay. Okay, here All we go. Right. Last two of these puppies. They're puppies. I think I like it. I'm a fan of a puppy. <laughs> okay, let's start. First thing I've got to do is lay out my lines. And I'm going to use this. I didn't bring a ballpoint pen again. I'll get you the two that I have because sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Well, it doesn't really have to write. Yeah. Michael says if you get a space in your tape and don't realize it like I did, you're going to be really sad when you go to dye later. <laughs> get a big, big streak of dye on the back. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure to tape over your, your overlaps. Have a little overlap. It also makes it easier to pull off. Like I feel like if you overlap it by like at yeah. least a half inch, the whole thing kind of tends mm -hmm. to come off instead of attempting to peel one piece after another. You kind of get the, you start on the side that's on the bottom of all the tape. So the first side that you put down is the side that you start pulling up from and then everything should be laying on top of that. Yeah. Pull off together. Hopefully that's the way it works. Hopefully. Sometimes it does. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to lay out my lines on all four of these pieces before I start because I'm also going to cut these lines with a swivel knife and I want to do that all at one time. So these patterns are not available yet. We are working on them. They will be coming out, but it's most likely going to be a couple months, I will say, because there's several of them. So it's going to be a pretty decent sized pattern pack, but we're pre-shooting the videos. And then when the patterns are done, all the videos will be done too. And also, with the measurements, they're really pretty straightforward to, to cut out. The panels are pretty easy. You accordion. Um, so, you know, if you if you have a mind to, to getting her done quickly. Getting her done. I have faith in all of you guys that you can do it. If I have time today, 
Mm -hmm. And I can get you at some point to run back to my bench and get those gusset parts because I forgot to bring those. I'll show everybody how I uh, fold the accordion part of it. Okay. Did you not do that last time? No, I think we explained it, but I didn't actually okay. do it because I already had it done. We, we will do that. Okay, the two lid flap deals or whatever you want to call them are marked. Well, so while Denny does all his tracing out for his swivel knife cutting, um, we had a lovely person send in a really neat uh, trading card to Denny here, and I don't, I don't know if I've, if I've seen him on the chat. I don't know if he's a live chatter, but he said he watches our videos and he wanted to send us a trading card. This guy, his name is Ron Moritz, like more, and then the word Ritz, like cracker, <laughs> Moritz. I could go some, for some more Ritz with some cheese. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways, he is out in California, and he has worked as a, is it a farrier? Yep. Farrier. All right. He's worked as a farrier for 30 years, um, but he had some health problems at the end of last year, and I think he said he had a heart attack. And he's been really enjoying our videos, and so he made us a trading card. He's been working on his, um, on his tooling here. Yeah. Yeah. And tried. Yeah, he said and I haven't I haven't done much tooling, but his yeah. tooling looks pretty darn good, I think. It does, and then he even engraved a little brass coin for Denny yeah, with his name on it. Really cool. So, thank you very much, Ron. We appreciate you participating in our um, trading card exchange, and we will be sending you one out today. We really enjoy your guys' stories. I tell you what. We actually, right before we went live, there was a couple that was from Lebanon, Missouri that had popped in and they had heard us on here saying, when you come in, make sure you ask for a tour. And unfortunately, since Tony and I were about ready to do this, we couldn't give them their tour. Um, but uh, Mama T was able to show them around and they were doing it. So they got to stop in and talk to Denny for just a couple minutes and talk to him about using a head knife. Mm -hmm. um, we know that's a thing that a lot of people uh, struggle with and Denny's... Denny's advice is put put your blade down and use use your head knife. Yeah. If you don't use it, you're never going to get good at That's it. That's right. Yeah. You never will get comfortable with it. Because you know what? You're probably not going to be very good at it for a minute. <laughs> but if you never get past that part, there's no magic trick that he can tell you that will just automatically make you a good head knife user. <laughs> <laughs> no. But we do appreciate you guys when you pop in. And if you do come in... I know it's not always possible, but Wednesday through Saturday, and you can meet Denny. If you come Mondays and Tuesdays, he's not here. It's not nearly <laughs> as fun. So just FYI, if you can make it Wednesday through Saturday, you can also meet Denny. And I feel like that's the most special part of the oh, tour. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Besides seeing the splitters, those are pretty cool. The splitters are really cool, <laughs> and the laser engravers are not bad either. Yeah. I think everybody's excited that we're watching Big Bang and Young Sheldon because they keep bringing the bazingas, you know? Bazinga! <laughs> I don't know how those people come up with stuff like that. There you go. Bonnie said she had a... Uh, she had bought a cheap piece of leather. The leather wasn't cheap, but she bought it really cheap. But it came with a whole bunch of scratches on it, uh -huh. which is probably why it was cheap. And so she was able to put the, the worst of those scratches inside her bag That's and in the great. zipper gusset and use them in those sections. That's and then also, great. don't forget to saddle soap. Saddle soap everything first. And if that doesn't fix the scratches, then you can cut around them. But sometimes that's a really good fix for scratches. <laughs> Saddle soap's good for everything that ails you. That's right. I'm still hoping Phoebe gets with me. 
<laughs> offers me a contract. <laughs> Should we put in a good word for yes, you? Yes, yes. Ooh, Michael says once his, his wife is about ready to have surgery and once she gets done with that, he's going to talk her into the trip down here. All right. That would be fun, Michael. About ready to start here. Oh, Denny, I discovered a fun thing to do with a meander the other night. I was working on my next knife sheath and I'm gonna do just a little bit of stamping on it. And I had gotten a couple of fun border tools from Barry King mm -hmm. last year when we went to Wisa. And, um, and so I did a little meander border with my fun little triangle shaped border tool. Uh -huh. And then I was looking at it and I also have this little uh, Barry King tool that just has like a dot and then a fan, right? It's right. Like a, right. And so I just took that and in the point of my, so my border tool was a really shallow triangle, right? So it was really wide bottom and then like a kind of short top. Mm -hmm. And so at the, at the top of it, I put the point and then I fanned it into the array that went around and it looked good. Oh, nice, I gotta see it. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring it in tomorrow. I just did a little, I always test tool before I tool tool. <laughs> before you do it, do it. I always, I'll, I'll trace it out on a, just a piece of leather that I've got, and I just, that's where I practice. I it's, think that's a to, pretty good idea for everyone. Yeah. Well, because I just, I don't do it often enough to be like, oh, I'm just going to grab this and go, right? I need to, or, you know, you're trying out different tools together. You're trying to get something together in your mind, and it's hard to do that in your mind. Like, you have to put it on the leather, see if you like it. Exactly. Yeah, and so I always do a little test run with my tooling before I do the actual thing and uh so i was staring there i was sitting there and i was i was looking at the meander and i was like okay well the meander looks good it's fine but then i just kept looking at my tools and i was like oh i wonder if i could do this and it, it made it it just made the whole thing way more interesting like it kind of look at like it took it from like a a 2d tool to a 3d tool oh yeah with the texture nice. difference yeah nice. Yeah, sometimes you can just amaze yourself. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Say, wow, I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> nine times out of ten, you couldn't. <laughs> yeah. But then there's number ten. Exactly. Striker wants to know if saddle soap will fix a headache. Yeah, well, it'll do something for it. You know, if you massage it into your temples. Good idea. <laughs> I don't know if the saddle soap will have any effect, but the massaging might work. <laughs> yeah. You could you can massage here, you can massage here, you can do like a little this massage. Just get the saddle soap all in there. Yeah, when you're rubbing your temple and your your you can't get any further, saddle soap it. It'll yeah. like that. <laughs> Joan, we are we are probably gonna do a saddle live this year. I think it's not yeah. it's not finalized yet, but I do think that that is going to be the plan. We need somewhere to put these saddle bags. I have I yeah <laughs> I have this to say about the saddle. We'll probably do parts of it live. Yeah. There's no way we can do the whole thing live unless you guys don't have anything else to do for. I mean, we could just months. live stream for months at a time. <laughs> we'll just we'll just make Denny work in here. <laughs> we'll use his table, and. Actually, mm -hmm. I'm thinking a lot of the saddle deal will have to be out there. Yeah. Because a lot of times I don't know what I'm going to need until the occasion arises. We'll just have to, we'll have to yeah. switch. We'll have to bring Denny in here and then we'll just, we'll all work out there in his section. I don't think it needs to be parts of it. I think it needs to be the whole thing. <laughs> Tony's going to try to, he'll. All right. I'll figure oh. this out. I was going to bevel first. Oh, I bet got ahead of myself. Okay, Luna, here we go. bevel inside this border all the way around. I'm a little bit dry there. Now, Striker, I'm pretty sure if you looked it up, we've, we've got plenty of temples in America. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I think there's... 
including the two on everybody's head. That's a lot of pimples. That's, that's uh, several million. All right. Try it again. Here we go. This is kind of like watching paint dry, you guys. <laughs> they love watching you tool. Do you? Or at least that's the feeling that I get when you're tooling, <laughs> is that they enjoy it. Remember the trick with a beveler is Hold your tool straight up and down. The minute you tip it in any direction, you're going to start leaving little tracks like those. But when you leave tracks, go back over it again. Cover up your tracks, guys. Yeah, cover your tracks. Didn't we learn this in CSI? Always got to cover your tracks. <laughs> Block your so we can't see it. Yeah, no, you're good here. I didn't know. I didn't know where I was. I didn't know which direction to block. <laughs> I think three years later, she's finally getting the hang of it. She's she's figured it out. Is she just laying there. She is. Well, she's good. as cool as a cucumber. Guys, I found the funniest video of mowing grass the other day. So it was somebody, they they put a stake in the middle of their yard. They had a huge rectangular space, right? Like a, a pretty good size rectangular space. They put a post in the middle of the yard and maybe, maybe two posts so that you would have some sort of a distance between them. And then they tied a string to one of them and then they tied the other end of the string to the lawnmower and then set it on go, right? Like one of those self-propelled ones. And then, you know, they did something to where it was just constantly running. And then the string just swung the lawnmower around in a circle. And it just mowed in a circle. There was a guy. That was pretty good. There was a guy off the 65 on your way to Branson. Uh -huh. That was in Ozark that did that. Did he really? Yeah, he would just have a big circle out there in his yard. I saw it running a few times. This was when I was a, a littler boy. So this is like. That's a genius idea. If you've yeah. got, like, if you have a huge space that you can get to with the circle, like every time it would go around, it would wrap itself around the pole, and then the circle would get smaller and smaller wow, and smaller. That's cool. And he Very probably cool. you, you probably over mow a lot. It reminds me of when but. I was in high school hauling hay. <laughs> <clears throat> After we got done, we had an old '53 Chevy flatbed pickup mm -hmm. that we were stacking hay on. There's three of us, but this this old truck had a hand throttle. You just pull it out and adjust the speed. You know. Okay. <clears throat> You put it in first gear and, and get in the back and start throwing hay, you know. When we got done, I don't know if this is appropriate, but we would all tie the steering wheel in a direction and get out in the middle of the field and put it in first gear and just pull the throttle out really slow and get on the back and drink beer while we just went around and around in circles. <laughs> it was a good time. <laughs> That's incredible. It, just, it never stopped. How did we never figure out that that's how the crop circles were made? I'm just going to yeah. say, you know. That's got to be it. it. It is. They finally, the dude, after like 30 years of secrecy, he was just like, all right, this is getting carried away. And it was like him and his buddy, they would just go out in the middle of the night and they would tie, they would tie string to their hats and then a pole in the middle. And then they would go out and do things in their circle. Really? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It was like two English dudes, I think. <laughs> and finally, they confessed to the crime. <laughs> was it a crime? I don't know. I mean, it was a huge conspiracy theory. Yeah. I was watching some show the other night. They were having head crop circles. Oh, what was that? 
some sort of reality show. <laughs> oh, how to become a cowboy or something. I mean, <laughs> it was in Alabama or someplace like that. And these guys would go out in the dark and you know they had to be half drunk or something. Mm -hmm. But they would find all this stuff and and say, how did that happen? There's got to be a UFO. There's got to be aliens. Was that the Dale Brisbane show? I don't It could have been. I yeah. don't know. It would be a trespassing crime. <laughs> that mall has an interesting sound to it. This like is a, a this is one of Barry King's originals. And it's got something in there. It's I rattling. Keep, I keep threatening to take it apart, but I'm afraid to. Ooh, oh, the, those very ones came in. Nice. Got some gators. Oh beautiful. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> that is a nice green. That's a nice that's a beautiful color. Yeah. That's good. All right, I'll, I'll let you guys have it. Okay, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> that is nice. That's your color. I know. So we got this, and then we got it in like a matte finish, too. Why don't we just cut out so. those things that you're getting ready to film and we'll just inlay some gator in those? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. But anyway, yeah, this thing rattles. <laughs> I've been threatening to take it apart, but I thought I might not get it back together again. Striker said, sold. Gator. Ugh. That's my crust, guys. I'm so glad I'm not the only one who did crazy stuff as a youngling. <laughs> I mean, that's what makes life fun. <laughs> it makes memories. Yeah. <laughs> My mom was telling me I bought her some shoes and I went over last night to take them to her. And um, my brother just got back from Oklahoma and he took his dog and, and his little well, his little family. He's got a little boy that's probably seven, I think, seven or eight. And um, so they went out there and, and their dog has never really interacted with the cattle because it's out in the country in, in Oklahoma. And um, this trip, she decided that she was going to interact with the cattle. It was her time. Yeah. And so she goes up and she approaches this cow. And apparently the cow was just kind of like, all right, whatever. Didn't really mind at first. And then, and then the cow started going closer to her and she backed away, which then excited the cow. And then apparently that dog started quite the stampede because it went to take off. And then all the cows went to follow it. And apparently my nephew came back being like, Stampede! <laughs> Just hollering about it. Oh, man. Yeah, so Ginger, Ginger probably doesn't. She's, she's, I don't think she's too fond of the cattle at this point. I knew a guy who trained stock dogs. Mm-hmm. And specialized in border collies. Okay. And if he, if you brought a dog to him that barked at the cows... He'd tell you just to take it home. He didn't want to mess with it. Because he, he claimed that the reason the dog barked at the cows is because they were afraid of them. Oh. You can't have a dog that's afraid of the cows. Yeah. you got to have one that's aggressive towards the cows. Those videos are some of my like my favorite videos to watch. Those little border collies just yeah. staring down those steers. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you bevel the edge before you stamp the design? <clears throat> after I after I get done with this, I'm going to go around this edge with a, a camouflage tool of sorts. Mm -hmm. And I want it to, to have a pretty deep impression. If you will look at, look at this, see how deep and dark that uh, the border is there? And that's because that I beveled it first. But now the outside of it with that 
with that sort of crown looking camouflage is not nearly as dark. Yeah. There you go. It just it just gives it a, a little extra depth. More, yeah, a little more depth. Yeah. A little more pillow. <laughs> you don't, you know, any of this stuff. You don't have to do it like this. This is just the way that I did. It. Um, Patrick, what's your what's your question? He says you have a nice mall. What's the difference? Why do most saddle makers prefer using one you're using, using the one you Uh, I don't know. I just started using this one. They, when I worked at PFI, they, they were, it used to be the Western Wear and Equipment Show in, mm -hmm. in Denver. Okay. Now it's WESA, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, they went to that and came back and he handed me this. He said, I got this from Barry King for you. So I started using it. Well, and he still sells those. Yeah. With the smooth ones? Oh, no, not the smooth. Yeah. I think they're all... Yeah, well, they've all got those little ridges on Yeah. Them. But it really doesn't make any difference. I mean, this one's been through the mill. Yeah. Well, this is just a really heavy one. So he's doing set stamp. And like he said, the stamp needs to be set pretty deeply into the leather to get the diamond effect on top. Right. And so if he was doing regular stamping, he'll be using his lightweight mallet over there. So, right tool for the job. Yeah. This is the right tool for the job. Yeah. And a lot of people might use a mallet, you know, a heavy mallet. Mm -hmm. it, whatever, you, whatever you have and whatever you want to use, whatever gets the job done. Next. This first course that you do, if, if you all noticed, I, I put a diagonal line on here and I'm going to work both directions from that. And the first course that you stamp is the most important because if you get it crooked. Everything's going to be crooked. Yeah. I mean, it's it's hard enough keeping it straight anyway, but if you don't start straight, you're going to end up whopper jawed. <laughs> hey, Luna, you're okay. Come on. What stamp is that? What was it again? 722. 722. Yeah, S722. It's a specialty 722. <laughs> is that what the S stands for? Yes. Well, it is special. Is that a 24 ounce ball to me? Yes. An original Berry King. An original, yes. Vintage. Yeah, I'm not saying this was his first one, but it was it was back there. <laughs> <laughs> he hadn't been making tools very long. Well, because it was just it was his his dad didn't do tools, right? He was just a saddle maker. He and did, they did the ropes. He, they did ropes. Yeah, but his dad made a lot of his own tools. That's where all this right stuff came from. Yeah. It stemmed from his dad, you know, making those tools to, to do what he was wanting to do. Right. And then I'm not sure the story on Barry, but I'm sure his dad had a great influence. I'm sure he did. I've never met Barry, but I did meet one of his brothers one time down in the basement at King's Ropes. Mm -hmm. And he was working on, I thought at the time, the most beautiful full flower stamp saddle I'd ever seen. What do you think now? <laughs> it was still beautiful. Dean, I think it, it's potato, potato. He's going, he's going both ways. Yeah. He's, I mean, even if he turned the stamp, 
as long as he turned it 180, it's the same stamp. Right, that's the same. <laughs> now don't turn it 90, because then you'll be more Whopper Jod. <laughs> yeah. You just think you know Whopper Jod. <laughs> I might have to eat lunch today. I'm already hungry. How do you spell that? Whopper Jod. <laughs> W-O-P-E-R. <laughs> J-A-D. J-A-W-D. <laughs> Buddy of mine always spelled stupid. S-T-O-O-P-I-D. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you remind me of Mater. Mater. <laughs> the cartoon character? Uh huh. <laughs> He's probably one of my favorite, like, just cartoon characters that's ever been animated. Didn't he have a truck? He is he a, truck. a truck. Oh, he is a truck. Mater is he's a, he was. That's right. Yeah. He's a. The he's cars a movie. Old. He's an old. Um, what, what is that called? With the with the crank on it so you could a tow truck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I have seen it, but it's been so long that I didn't remember. It, it could have been yesterday. <laughs> I wouldn't have remembered it. Going tractor tipping. Just the best. Tractor tipping. <laughs> tractor tipping. Have you ever been cow tipping? Well, I think that's what. No, That's I've what never been cow. <laughs> Have you been cow tipping? No, I've never done it. I, I always thought it might be kind of cool, but I never tried it. <laughs> any, any of you out there ever been cow tipping? Right after the video, Denny, we're going to go do it. Okay, it's got to be dark. Well, it'll be dark somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Just drive far enough. No, I don't think. We'll have to probably have to fly. Yeah. By the time we get there, we might. Yeah, you can just wait. <laughs> Man, this is gonna give me a headache. How do you do this? Well, is this why you're deaf? One of the reasons. <laughs> gonna need to bring an earplug on this side. Ever been to an alligator rodeo? I have not. That sounds like a dumb idea. Striker. Am I correct? <laughs> <laughs> Am I right about that? Okay. Ever watch some marine races? <laughs> Can't say that I have. Not from the couch. <laughs> 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 have you watched them from anywhere else? <laughs> no. <laughs> I have not. If I was going to watch them, I'd want it to be from the couch. And that, I guess, would be impossible, right? <laughs> yeah, you're setting that real deep. You're getting that as good as the yeah. end stamp. Yeah. See, once I've 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 already kind of burnished that when I beveled it, but it really burnishes when I <clears throat> use that camouflage. Yep. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, camouflage really makes the world go round with any sort of field stamping. Yeah. And I think it's one thing that if if you don't do leather craft and you're just getting into it, like you don't you don't know that, and so a lot of times you'll end up with this. And it just doesn't look that good. You know, you're you're making yeah. a knife sheath and you'll just put a basket weave and yeah. then it just ends and there's yeah. nothing. And it's like, right. if you just knew about the camouflage. Yeah. Well, and that's where the camouflage gets its name. Yeah. Because it camouflages the edge of the ragged edge of the I've heard that hunters stand. really enjoy camouflage. Well, they do. Yeah. Do they really enjoy it? Like, is that like a, Isaac, is that like a thing? You like get excited about your camo? Well, now the new thing is if you're a cool guy, you actually don't wear camo anymore. It's all about just wearing solid, neutral colors. Just like, orange? No, just like <laughs> grays and greens and tans. There's a lot of people that get very 
particular about their hunting clothes. It's like a little fashion show for them. I may or may not be able to pretty soon on the runway. Yeah, I think it's, it's pretty fashionable. I don't doubt it. I was watching a video last night, and this guy was talking about, like, the the change of, like, military camo gear and how, like, back, I don't know when, like, mid-century or whatever, the outfits that they wore were actually pretty good. And then he's like, and then they turned into Minecraft camo, like we're some video game people. And he really is hating on the current yeah. style of camouflage that is the new style. He's like, we're pixelated. <laughs> and then there's the guys that go bury themselves in a pile of leaves and wait for an elk to walk by and jump up and choke them to death. <laughs> that also <laughs> sounds really dumb. Yeah, I don't think I would. There's a lot that of that sounds like, like alligator rodeos. Yeah. I thought it was an elk. Turns out it was a bear. Ooh, yeah, it'd be a good one. Probably make that mistake once. Yeah. I learned how to run fast. I'm just going to let you guys know that as humans, we don't really outpace a lot of the animal kingdom. <laughs> and at least not the stamina <laughs> that they have. <laughs> Unless, like, that's your day job, to run real fast. Um, you're probably screwed. I like the guy said there was a group of hikers out there, and one of them said, <clears throat> I'm not very fast. What if a bear comes after us? And the guy says, you don't have to be faster than everyone. You just have to be faster than one other person. <laughs> the slowest person. <laughs> yeah. There's that scene in... Um, what's it called? Oh, shoot. We talked... No. Oh. That movie where those three guys are trying to find D.B. Cooper's treasure, and it's like uh, Matt Lillard. No, Matt Lillard, and then two other funny people. What is it? Anyways, there's like <laughs> one. Luna. What? Luna. Luna. You're fine. Come What's here. happening? I don't know. There's someone in camouflage out there. What are you doing? I was literally about to say, she's doing pretty good for the noise. That's a Luna Bark. If you come in and startle her, you'll get that. <laughs> that was a different one than startle. That's the house bark that somebody's at the door. Yeah, Seth Green. Without a paddle. That's the right one. Thanks, guys. I knew you'd come through for me. Anyways, there's a scene in there where there's a bear and they're trying to outrun it. And Matthew Lillard is, like, taking off of his shoes. And, and I think it's Seth is like... Why are you taking off your shoes? And he's like, because I run faster without shoes. And then he's like, you can't outrun a bear. And he's like, I don't have to outrun a bear. I just have to outrun you. <laughs> Luna, come here. That was a good <laughs> Luna. You don't get to police the alleyway. It's fine. Hey. We're done. One. Well, yeah, now i got to go around the outside. Yeah, we'll let Denny do... I do oh. like that. <laughs> Denny will do the rest of them today and tomorrow, and then we'll be ready for construction. <laughs> hey! All right, so I think it is prudent to note that on the flap, you tool right up to the edge. So yes. this is the flap, yes. and so he's tooling right up to the edge here. So his border is at the edge. Oh, well, close anyway. Right. But then on the front panel here, because you have a stitch line, you need to come in the edge to allow for your stitch line. So it's a little bit inset. So if you are tooling these, just keep that in mind that Denny is tooling the panel right up to the edge here and then allowing for a seam allowance there. And I forgot to do that. So he'll do but some I things. will. I will. It'll come out. It'll come out. You weren't specific about that in your instructions. Yes, I was. Wasn't I? Or was I mean, you I? just said, if you plan to tool any parts, do that now. <laughs> yeah. See? I'm doing exactly what I said. Can you do that right there? 
Thanks. Yeah, for a second. Can I turn it like this? Yes. If you're going to make a padded rifle sling, what ounce of edge would you use? A rifle sling? I would use probably, depends on what you're going to line it with, I would probably use a, a five to six ounce. Mm -hmm. And then whatever, use, whatever padding I use and then use a, like a three to four ounce liner. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, you're, you're, you're okay. Well. That's your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> He'll get the screen eventually. Yeah, there you go. Uh -huh. As soon as you got on screen, you moved it down. <laughs> You're good. Stryker is curious what uh, an average Denny saddle cost back in the day. When I first started building saddles, my base price was... Uh, if I remember right, $900. Wow. And what year I, was this? This was in 1983 or 84, I forget. But when I quit the last saddle that I built in my own shop, my base price was 1900 So it was quite a difference. But nowadays, you know, in reality, to build a really good saddle, you're going to have $1,500 invested in it, mm -hmm. just in material. Yeah. So you've got to take that into consideration. Yeah, two sides of Hermit Oak. Do you, how much does that saddle tree that you just bought cost? Uh, 450 or 500 in that area. 500 bucks for a saddle tree? Yeah. You've got, if you're doing two sides of saddle skirting, those are 250 to $300 a side. Yeah. So that's another... Six hundred dollars. A sheepskin. Yeah. Yep, that's oh, another hundred. So nine hundred dollars in nineteen eighty four today is worth two thousand six hundred and seventy one dollars and fifty six cents. All right. I still want more. <laughs> and Denny would like to make more than four fifty an hour. Yeah. <laughs> that's always been my goal. <laughs> no, I mean. You, you can <clears throat> charge whatever you want to charge for anything that you make, but yeah. getting people to pay it is the trick, you know? Right. Yeah, you got to find the right yeah. clientele. Yeah. So we had a few messages on Facebook. Talking about the python skins we had. 23. There are some long oh. ones. 18 yeah. to 20-something feet. Yeah, 5 to 6 meters. There's a couple short ones, um, but most of them are in the, the five to six meter range. They're anywhere from a foot wide at most of the narrowest to upwards of 18, 24 inches. A couple, like, they, there are some big ones. Um, and then are we going to do a stamping tool bag tutorial? Maybe like, a, maybe like a tool roll or something like that? I don't know. Oh, well, the boys were actually, they were working on like a little kind of a fun carry-all. Move towards Liz. Oh, sorry. Towards yourself. There you right go. there. Does that work for you? I guess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you later. Let's see here. How long, how long did it take you to make a saddle? A plain saddle will take around 60 hours for me. A full tooled saddle will take That's in perfect, the neighborhood of 300 hours. 300. All right. So now you're gonna, you're gonna. I would do the other. Yeah. The other panel. You're gonna seal it, let it dry. Oh, put some needs foot oil on it. Right. Well, needs foot oil it, and then seal it, and then antique it. So Denny will do this times eight. Yep, eight more times. He's gonna do eight more of these. Eight more panels. <laughs> yeah. Eight more eyeballs. Yep. Eight more <laughs> eyeballs. Or it's almost like a um like a paisley. Almost, yeah. like the beginning yeah. of a paisley. Yeah. Better than eyeballs. Kind of a cornucopia looking deal. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. Little Fear says, why do some malls have grooves and some don't? Uh, 
some people think it needs the grooves to keep the mall from slipping off the tool, but uh, just hit it right. This one does not. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you hit it square, if you hit it off square, it doesn't matter if it has grooves or not. It's still going to slip off. Yeah. But, well, and I think probably as the plastics have evolved, it's changed what we can do. Right. Like you know, it, you know when when the tools started to be created with the poly and all that when it kind of went from the rawhide too because rawhide doesn't have grooves no it's just flat <laughs> we're getting some roof work done maybe no, that's what's happening bringing in the conference room chairs oh right um yeah so plastics have changed allowed us to do more things different things yeah. it's it's like this is pretty hard stuff, mm -hmm. and all, all of Barry King's malls are pretty hard, they're, but they're all this white poly stuff, mm -hmm. and it's hard. But then Ed Labar uses something that's harder yet. Yeah. I mean, if you look at it, you can kind of see marks, but there's no indentations anywhere well, on You've been using that. this for a minute. I've used that a lot. No, it's still smooth. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. But it, you know, all that stuff is use what you've got, you know. Yeah. It, I mean, just use it. Yeah, if if you're wanting something different, get something different, but don't get it just because everybody else is using it. Get it because it's something you want. <laughs> this is what happens when I make Denny do things live. Yeah, that was probably just an oversight. <laughs> he wanted to, you missed your bead line. Yes, I did. <laughs> That's okay. We still have. I did. Denny will fix things. Yes, Denny will fix it. <laughs> uh, thanks. Let's see here. Smooth mall, the same. Blah, blah. Yeah, so check out those Python skins. They're pretty cool. We just have a limited number of them, I believe. Well, when he posted it, we had 23 left. That's what I put out on retail yesterday. They're really cool. You're not going to get a bad one. They're just really cool to hang up. Did you see him last yes, week? I yeah, did. he saw them. They are cool. I was in here yesterday rolling up Python skins for like three hours to get through all of them and get them all out. Man. But so check them out. Um, call us up if you like one, or email. You can email um, team at springfieldleather.com, and the office will get you situated. All right. Well, that Sorry. is today's show. We will be back on Friday, and uh, we'll do. Do you need to do the accordion? Yes, I will do that. I'll, can you, can I'll try and have it? everything stamped by Friday. Okay. And then... Uh, and we'll do the accordion we'll first do thing. do the accordion. <clears throat> I wonder if I should put the finish on everything so we can actually start putting it together. I would day. say you should finish okay. it. Okay. Yeah. They've watched us finish things before. Yes. If you need help with that, call. Okay. Alrighty, guys. Have a great uh, rest of your day, and we'll see you tomorrow for live shopping. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.